This chapter covers the cardiovascular system. So the first thing that we want to look at is the function and the anatomy of the heart itself. So the first thing to be aware of is that the heart is a dual pump system. And this dual pump system means that there are two sides. There's a right side and a left side, and they each uh, are responsible for a different function. So for example, the right side, its job is to receive oxygen, poor blood from the tissues, and that blood then goes to the lungs via the pulmonary circuit to pick up oxygen. Whereas the left side of the heart, its job is to receive oxygenated blood from the lungs, and it takes that blood and pumps it to the lungs to, or I'm sorry, pumps it to the system, to the body, to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the entire body. So the general anatomy of the heart is that there are four main chambers. There are two, what we refer to as receiving chambers, and these receiving chambers are atria. There's a right atrium and a left atrium. And you should know um, what their function is, that where they receive blood from. The um, ventricles are the pumping chambers of the heart. And in addition to them being referred to as the pumping chambers of the heart, we can also say the word ejection, which they're responsible for, ejection of blood, as well as discharging of blood. And these words help in understanding specifically the cardiac cycle. So pumping means the same thing as ejection and discharging of blood. So the right ventricle's job is to pump blood to the pulmonary circuit, whereas the left ventricle's job is to pump blood through the entire systemic circuit. This slide is showing a graphical representation of kind of what we just discussed. So let's look uh, more closely at the right side versus the left side of the heart. And the nice thing about this diagram is it shows you the path that the blood is going. So for the right side of the heart, we have the right atrium and we have the right ventricle. And blood is going to be received from the system. It's deoxygenated blood goes into the right atrium through the vena cava. After blood is ejected from the right ventricle, it then goes to the lungs to pick up oxygen. And it goes out what's called the pulmonary trunk. And that pulmonary trunk then divides to become the pulmonary arteries. And it's headed to the pulmonary circuit where it picks up oxygen. Now we have blood that's freshly oxygenated. Scarlet red blood, if you will. And that blood returns to the left side of the heart through the pulmonary veins back into the left atrium, into the left ventricle. And as you know now, the left ventricle's job is discharging or ejection of blood. So blood exits the left ventricle to go out to the body through the aorta and its various branches to the systemic circuit. So let's look at the anatomy of the heart. Your heart is approximately the size of your fist, so it's less than one pound. It sits in the mediastinum, and the mediastinum is the area that's going to be just between the two lungs. So the location of the heart, it sits right on the superior surface of the diaphragm, and specifically the region that sits on the superior surface of the diaphragm is going to be the two ventricles, specifically the right and the left ventricles. So every time that you, um, you know, feel, would feel indigestion, for example, you can sense that in your heart because the right and the left ventricles would be the region of the heart, which we refer to as the diaphragmatic base of the heart, that they're actually touching the diaphragm. 
A couple important parts of the heart are the base of the heart. This is the posterior portion of the heart, leans towards the right shoulder, and the apex points towards the left hip. And the apex is the pointed part of the heart. So we can see that shown on this diagram. On this diagram, we're seeing um, the heart located in the mediastinum region here, right in the middle between the two lungs. And then over here, we're seeing a transverse section, which shows the mediastinum. And you can see that there are some different structures related to the heart here. For example, this is the esophagus. This would be the vena cava here, the blue, and the red would be the aorta. So the coverings of the heart are very important, and when there's problems with the coverings of the heart, um, patients can get pericarditis or uh, pericardial effusion is called. So the pericardium is the double walled sac that surrounds the heart. It's made up of two layers, and these two layers are both serous pericardium layers. The outermost one is the parietal layer, and the inner one is the visceral layer. Now the function of these two layers is to allow for this smooth movement across uh, each other so that there isn't any sort of uh, attachment or friction between the two layers. So the job of these layers is to reduce and decrease friction. So one of the problems that could occur in this area is pericardial effusion. Pericardial effusion is going to occur when there is excess fluid that is located between the parietal and the visceral pericardium. And the way that this is going to be corrected is that a doctor um, is going to have to remove remove the fluid that's in that space, which is causing this pericardial effusion. So the layers of the heart wall, there's three different layers of the wall, and these three layers are similar to um, what we'll find in the blood vessel. And there's a middle, and an inner, a middle, and an outermost layer. The innermost layer is called the endocardium. That's the part that's going to be actually touching the blood itself. The middle layer is the myocardium, and that's where the cardiac muscle is, where the cross bridges are formed and the contraction actually happens of the heart. And then the outermost layer is the epicardium, and we'll see those in this slide. So this is a really nice slide. It's, it, it's showing a region of the left atrium, a part of its wall. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it just a little bit better. And what we see here is the heart wall. I mentioned the endocardium is going to be the inner layer that touches the blood. The myocardium is the middle layer where the cardiac muscle is found. The epicardium is the outermost layer. And between the epicardium and the, the parietal layer is the pericardial cavity. So this is where fluid should not normally be. There's a little bit of fluid, but it shouldn't build up. If it does, again, that's called a uh, pericardial effusion. So looking at the cardiac muscle itself, the design of the heart is that there are cardiac muscles that um, form bundles around the heart, and they do this in such a way um, that each chamber is going to work as one unit when it's contracted. And one important part of the right ventricle specifically is what's called the moderator band. And what's important about the moderator band 
is that it carries part of the AV bundle of the conduction system. And so this is really just showing the organization of the cardiac muscles into bundles and it allows for um, it allows for the, the what's called the intrinsic conduction system to be deeply attached within the cardiac muscle. And it's also going to allow for the entire ventricle to work as one unit.